wind's right, right in our face. If we use the moose decoy with the paddle, maybe we can cut the distance enough for a shot. It's gonna be dicey. No cover, just a decoy. Shooting this Aimpoint Red Dot micro sight, I'm comfortable out to 200 yards, but I'd like to cut the distance to at least 150. He thinks we're another bull. Perfect. It is one of the most evolutionarily unique species on the planet. The most dangerous animal in Alaska to hunt is not the brown bear, it is the mountain goat. They make their living living somewhere where nobody else wants to be. This is one of the hardest, most challenging species to get up close and personal with. There's a lot of places that you could fall that they couldn't retrieve you from. I don't want to die today. It is the harshest environment in North America. The hunter is the steward of the wildlife. If more people hunted to get their food, they would care more. Through hunting, we have access to the resource, we get to use the resource, we get to monitor the resource, and over time, it makes a healthier system altogether. I got my big girl panties on, and I'm ready to go do this. We were socked in. There's no other option. We just got to wait it out. because I love the challenges I face, the people I meet, the wildlife I see. It's got nothing to do with the kill itself. I'm a little nervous, but I wanna go there. I wanna see if I have what it takes to get to where they live. And the majority of hunters in this world will never do this. The ride to the base camp was incredible. I'm seeing glaciers, and here I am looking out of this plane at this land, one of the most beautiful, purest, rawest places. There's so many rivers and it's so green and there's flowers. The terrain that mountain goats are in is unbelievable. You know, it's, it's beautiful up there. I'm able to uh, land on glaciers and uh, mountain tops um, to get way back in these areas where some of these goats have never been hunted before. And I know that I'm about to go off into this raw and pure and wild land and I'm ready to go do this. weather is finally clearing. Pilots are headed up to check the flight ceiling. Olivia readies her gear. Then she's off, destined for a far mountain valley and a landing strip high in the Alpine. Being out here in the Alaska mountains is extremely, extremely dangerous. Pretty much at any time, you know, a bear could come into camp, but there could also be rock slides, you could slip and fall, you know, it rains for days on end. The, the rock, they're covered in moss, they're extremely slippery. You could twist an ankle, fall down a cliff, you know, break your leg. It, it is dangerous, and you, you have to pay attention to what you're doing. You have to be careful.
As the sound of the plane fades away, the grandeur of nature awaits. For the last 37 years, I've targeted trophy billies. I realized a long time ago, you just can't shoot a goat and expect the goats to be here every year. You don't want to shoot nannies because in the lifespan of a nanny, she might give birth to, you know, eight to 12 goats. It's not about going and killing animals. It's about the experience of, you know, being out in the mountains. You, you walk into a blueberry patch and eat a bunch of blueberries, which are absolutely amazing or you know seeing a site that you would honestly never know existed you know drinking some mountain spring water which is better than anything I've ever had in the city it, it, make, it makes you feel one with the world ptarmigan the feathers of these alpine birds turn fully white in the winter to provide safety in the snow from predators I was born and raised uh, here in Anchorage, Alaska, third generation Alaskan. I, I did uh, four years active duty in the Marine Corps. I did two, two tours in Iraq. I've experienced a lot and I've been a lot of, a lot of different places in Alaska. This is, a, this is a special place down here. Hunting mountain goat is not for the faint of heart. You can't train for extreme wind or rain piercing the side of your face. You can't train for slipping and falling and the emotional side of accepting defeat. You can't, you can't train for that. Their target, two billy goats feeding on the far ridge. You have to come in mentally prepared to endure one of the harshest environments on earth. It's so hard. A thousand yards away, Jeremiah decides they need to climb higher and get above the goats. Crazy. The massive Billy doesn't have horns. There is no way to determine his age without horns. Olivia and Jeremiah will have to find another mature Billy. About 30 hours of straight rain, fog, and wind. And now we're just waiting for the fog to clear. It's dry shampoo. That's the dry shampoo? It's the UK's number one dry shampoo. <laughs> I'm sure Batiste had no idea to be used in a mountain goat camp in Alaska. Finally, the weather is starting to break after 42 hours straight of rain and wind. Mountain goats are out, but groups of nannies with kids. No mature billies are to be found. A decision is made. The crew needs to move. Olivia and Jeremiah will be picked up and ferried to another mountain. Flying in the Super Cub airplane through these magnificent mountains, Olivia can almost reach out and touch them. Landing on the face of a mountain requires extremely good piloting skills. One slip up and you're dead. Sam has to make a quick turnaround as it takes time to ferry in guide, hunter, still photographer, and film crew. What do you think of that landing, huh? Hey, man. <laughs> well, it's a little creepy when you're coming in awful hot and the hill's right in front of your face. A little nervous there for a second when we got, like, it felt like things was going to flip over. This mushy. Water. Water. It felt like it was the wing was gonna hit the ground. It's like like this. It rained all night long and I was worried that I was gonna be repeating exactly what had happened before. But it was starting to clear and that gave me hope. To get to the goats, they follow their tracks up a goat trail. Goat sign is everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
Jeremiah saw two goats, one lower and one higher. We had to wait for the sun to soften the snow so we could get in a little closer and not make a bunch of noise. And we had to be extremely stealthy because they were right on the ridge line. And Jeremiah was confident that there were other goats in the area as well. So we decided to just sit, relax, let the atmosphere calm down. Climbing up these steep cliffs and crossing rivers and just, you know, sleeping in tents, everything we have to go through. Wake up early, you get back to camp late, you're hungry, you're tired, your body's sore. You connect in a way, you don't connect with people nowadays. I love helping other people push themselves to the limit. The, the client always comes up to me and says, thank you, thank you so much, whether we get an animal or not, just for the pure experience. And they've done things that they never would have dreamed that they would, that their body could physically do. You know, that they leave here with a new appreciation of the mountains and, and of Alaska. thick cloud envelops the hunters. So we're completely in this cloud, and it's not just a cloud, it is the foggiest, thickest cloud. All of a sudden an opening came, and he could see within 50 yards that there was a goat. So Jeremiah said, get your gun, get your pack, and let's go. But we couldn't range it. I'm telling you, this was a thick cloud that the range finder couldn't work. And what we were so scared about the whole time was that taking a shot at a goat on a cliff, they will jump, they will fall. And we wanted to make sure that where the goat was was a situation where I could get off a couple shots and not have to worry about it jumping a cliff. Reload, boom. My first shot spined him. Second shot blew out the shoulder, double long, great. Third shot, <laughs> he decided to roll off the ledge. Ugh. Olivia's billy has rolled just below the snow field, but another huge billy steps up out of his perch between them. He is massive. They watch as every muscle in his body flexes through his late August fur. He is truly the monarch on this mountain. And even though it was challenging getting to him, that's what goats do. The first moment that there is any fear, instinct takes over and they jump off cliffs. As I'm getting down to this billy, I, you know, it's emotional. I have fought to get up this mountain, first of all. I have gone through so many weather problems and so many unsuccessful stalks. All I can think about is how magnificent he is. Such an old, beautiful Billy. For me, it was important to pack him out. Jeremiah, he packed out the meat, which I can't wait to taste. It, I was scared. I was really scared. I, you know, we had crampons on. That pack is more than half my body weight. And if I slipped and fell, I knew I was dead. But this was the final task of being a responsible, ethical hunter was to bring that animal down that mountain. As luck would have it, Sam is flying and checking on hunters. He picks up Olivia and her mountain monarch and flies them back to base camp. You want to see where he lives. You want to climb the mountains he climbs. You want to 
struggle and cry and sweat and fear for your life. Killing is a small side of this whole pursuit of the hunt. It takes a lot of effort to see them until you go through that effort. I don't think you can really appreciate just how remarkable they are for your average person in New York or New Mexico or whatever. I don't know that they would ever get to the point where they would go try to see one. The wildlife depend on hunters. I know it sounds preposterous. You kill them, therefore you save them. It's a renewable resource. And that's what happens when you have hunting. People pay attention, they watch animals, they count them, they understand their habits better, and they can create programs and plans that ensure that for the future there will be mountain goats. I love seeing that hand-in-hand -hand relationship between mankind and wildlife. That is the responsibility that hunters have, is to protect the world's great wildlife. Hunter dollars, hunters passion, hunters continuously pursuing unique species of game ultimately preserves them.